better person than I knew I was. Hey folks, let's spend some time with friends up north. Pat Kreitlow of Up North News is on Lake Minnesota. Kristen Lyerly in OBGYN is on the Fox River. And up on Lake Monaco is Kirk Bangstead of the Monaco Brewing Company. Wherever you are, welcome. You're up north. Won't you let me die happy? Okay, that's good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Outdoor Podcast. This is Kirk Banks. And Pat Kreitlow and Kristen Lyerly are not with me tonight because we are in Sino- up north, Wisconsin. Has come to Guerneville, uh, California, which is in Sonoma County, which is the heart of wine country. And uh, the reason I'm here is because I partnered with the owner, Matt Grove of Equality Wine of Equality Vines who, and to make choice wine. And I have the actual winemaker to my right, who is Melissa Kuhn, who, uh, who made these, this beautiful, uh, we're from Wisconsin. I don't know that much about wine. All I know is this is the tastiest Sauvignon Blanc I've ever had. (laughs) (laughs) So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do something completely different. We're not going to talk about politics. You see that we have two bottles of wine in front of us. Both have been made by Melissa, and uh, we're going to taste them. Uh, and by the way, if uh, you know, while we're talking about all of this stuff, you have this wonderful opportunity to buy choice uh, choice wine for twenty percent off the, uh, the retail price if you go to the website that I put in the description of this Facebook page and type in up north. You, uh, so up north, you type that promo code in and you can get 20% off on the wine. And I'll remind you throughout the course of this podcast about that. So let's start first. Uh, it's crazy that in talking to Melissa, I found out that you actually have Midwestern roots. I do have Midwestern <laughs> roots. Yes, I was born in St. Paul, Minnesota, went to St. Olaf College, got a biology degree there was not your typical winemaker path of, you know, uh, pruning vineyards in the summer or being a harvest intern. Had you, no, you're telling no, me the, the grapes don't grow very well in St. Paul? Ah, uh, no, the University of Minnesota <laughs> okay. does do a good okay. job with grapes, but, <laughs> right, you know, right. not nearly as prolific as in Northern California. We probably see more cornfields, right, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, Minnesota yeah. and Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I wanted to do something ecology related, something for the environment. But uh, when my husband moved to Northern California for his job, I figured I would transfer my lab skills to the wine industry. So in 2005, I was a harvest uh, intern, lab intern. Um, that's how I started my career in the wine industry and just worked my way up from there. So before we get to your career in winemaking, you did mention to me that for a brief point in time, you lived in Cedarburg, Cedarburg Wisconsin. Cedarburg, Wisconsin, yes. And yes. so tell me about your grocery store experience during Packer games. Yes. <laughs> Coming from Minnesota and moving to Cedarburg, I was a little nervous. It, you know, I didn't have a Vikings flag or anything to hang out. I just was really afraid that my house was going to be egged or some terrible experience. But yeah, Sunday afternoon was typically my time to go shopping at the grocery store. And I was shocked to discover that no one else was shopping on Sunday afternoon when the Packers were playing. Exactly. But that the people who were working there had the game uh, on over the PA system. So they <laughs> and I could follow the score. But that I had never experienced that before yeah. in, in Minnesota. But so I don't know. Is that is that a normal thing yes. in Wisconsin? Yes. Or uh, in the politi- you're, you're in the, always at home watching the game, so you don't know. In the political world, we've been told to never make any calls that encourage people to vote for one way or the other way during Packer games. Because if you do that, the people will be so mad that you've interrupted <laughs> them during a Packer game that they will probably tell you they're going to vote for the other person just to just to make you mad so (laughs) for spike exactly okay so um so we didn't even know that that we had a wisconsin and midwest connection uh, to this wine that uh, many of you have already ordered um let's talk about how you guys and i want to get to this wine actually 
Matt, can you open up Choice yeah. and pour it while we... While I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've been here for like three days now, and Matt and I have gotten to know each other, uh, each other very well. And I'm telling you, we think that, you know, Wisconsinites, we think that we can drink because, you know, we, we, it's cold all the time. We sit at bars. Nothing like they can in Sonoma. I mean, oh my gosh, Matt. Thank you for, You're welcome. Thank you for helping my liver out yes. here. <laughs> It'll be very tiring today. <laughs> We had a tiring day. All right. Well, cheers to choice. Cheers, cheers to, to choice. choice. To choice. Cheers to yes. Okay. Hold on. Here we go. Mm. Okay. Yeah. This sounds. This seems very fancy. What we're doing, uh, and it is, but it's also of the earth. And and I'm s tasting some grass here what what are we tasting here melissa yes well that's uh whoever's tasting you know is free to uh i i would jump in i i i love this wine it's, it is a spectacular sub block i think a lot of sub blocks can be out of balance and, and lean one way or the other right at the nose i get some some wonderful lemongrass a little bit of stone fruit it hits my palate i get a little of these tropical notes mm -hmm. and then at the back end just this wonderful tartness and lemon zest it's it's a spectacular wine, Melissa. You really have, have Thank done, you. outdone yourself. Thank you so much. It was, a, I think, a really good vintage. 22 was right. a good vintage. Uh, really stressful for me as a winemaker. Um, Matt, I don't know, you live mostly in Southern California, but we really had a heat spike yes. over Labor Day weekend. I mean, like crazy, like 115 degrees, oh. which is... Had you picked... Saw me at that no, point. No, it, it wasn't ripe okay. going into that heat spike. But fortunately, we had enough rain last year. There was enough water uh, in the soil to protect the vines. Um, and we picked shortly after that heat spike. Where did the grapes for this wine come from? So two different vineyards, uh, both in the Russian River Valley. Uh, one is from Bob Hopkins, uh, someone that uh, I've worked with for my whole winemaking career since 2017 i started making wine and uh right along east side road just right next to sure. the river yeah um for a piece of the chardonnay actually comes from his vineyard as well and then we get the rest of the sauvignon blanc sauvignon blanc grapes from nick laris who is also a well-known grape grower grows mm -hmm. a lot of pinot noir as well and that's right off of river road uh it's so a little bit warmer area a little bit further uh east okay yes. so so a lot of people in wisconsin i mean we're in the heart of all things wonderful about wine but mm -hmm. when you just mentioned i mean this is so local yeah that like most people most of the wines we can get in wisconsin have grapes from all over the place that people kind of source and these are the, the commercial wineries um but you're telling me these, these grapes come from within five miles of here ten miles of here correct yeah okay yeah. And you and know, those, the, and you those, know the farmer, right? And you and know the we, producer, and yes, right. these relationships right. are, are many, many years in the making, and yeah. that's how you start to get consistency from vintage to vintage. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you: Is it, the the process with Sauvignon Blanc is different than Chardonnay? Um, you bear it, you ferment it in stainless steel tanks, I assume. Is there right. any wood at all on this? No wood at all on okay. this. Yes. What does wood mean for the people? For the un, un the, the uncouth among us, which includes the beer maker here. <laughs> right, I, maybe you've used some oak barrels, yeah. but uh, most of the ones that we use for our Chardonnay come from France. Yes. Um, they hold about 60 gallons. Um, and so for the Chardonnay, we'll fill those with about 50 gallons of Chardonnay juice and ferment in the oak. Okay. Uh, some new oak, some. I'm listening. I'm some, getting my timer while you talk. Some barrels that have been previously used, which we call sure. that more neutral oak. So you're not getting the toasty kind of vanilla, right. caramel, creamy notes from the toasting of the barrel. Um, after a few years, the oak isn't imparting that anymore. Um, but you still. So, the, so new French oak evolves to neutral French oak, as you see. Yes. We used to. Oak used to be the biggest thing like what, 10 years ago or something, and then, then unoaked was a thing, and now for, it's something for, in the middle? For Chardonnay, yeah. I mean, I think I like just a little bit of it. I mean, kind yes. of a kind of like a tool, a spice kit, maybe when, when you're cooking, just a little bit of that oak nuance just gives it some nice flavor, but not over the top. And, and Plus, we'll get it's to expensive, that. too. That's true. 
um, we'll get to the Chardonnay in a minute, but that what she's speaking to is, is using some part of the production we'll do in stainless steel, which brings some acidity to the table, some minerality to the table. On the Chardonnay, she puts, we said, wood on it. That means she ferments in the barrel or in the oak barrel. Um, but the Sauvignon Blanc is fermented in stainless. So when I said, is there any wood on it? There's no wood. That means there is no oak barrel involved in the process of our Sauvignon Blanc. Well, the one thing that's nice about fermenting in a tank as well is we can temperature control that, which I'm sure you probably deal with that in the beer making process sure. as well. So we can ferment more slowly, kind of capture those fresh fruit fruit flavors rather than if the temperatures get higher, you're going to blow off some right. of those fruit flavors. So the part of the story that you're getting away from the taste of the wine is is Matt needs to convince you to make wine for him uh and and <laughs> he's and really you're, good at that <laughs> and you're a busy person uh you know and and so you know what part you know i'm guessing because we're i mean and by the way i think mo most everybody that's watching this right now is is read about what i've been doing with choice i've been doing it i started off with hard seltzer which weirdly you know, not weirdly, like, like there's a, you know, hard seltzer is, is, is not that, you know, uh, it's kind of for younger folks. And so I, I think I made a, a really wonderful label for a reproductive rights uh, and, and folks that cared about reproductive rights. But a lot of the folks that cared about reproductive rights were, 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 were wine drinkers and not necessarily hard seltzer drinkers. So my hard seltzer is doing fine. But I was like, I think I'm putting the wrong liquid in the, in, in you know, in this choice label. And so, so talk about how we approached you about, about, about choice and, and, and what it means to you to be able to make a wine that, uh, you know, helps reproductive rights groups. Yeah, well, it's not the first time I've worked with Matt. I mean, mm -hmm. we did a 19th Amendment uh, Sauvignon Blanc a we few did. years ago as well. So we already had that relationship and uh, we were kind of talking even a little bit earlier today, just, um, being in my generation, I just never thought Roe versus Wade would be overturned. Um, and I just, it's such a stunning thing to have happen. Um, just really excited to be involved in this, um, trying to raise money. And, you know, I feel fortunate living mm. in California that, you know, I feel like we, as women, have more of a choice than women yeah. in some other states. So in Wisconsin, you may have read that there's an 1847 law in the books, uh, 170 years old or something that bans abortion that was never supposed to be in the books. It was it should have been stricken from our laws like 100 years ago, but because of Roe, it just kind of languished. And and but now it's back and there's enough. You know we have a gerrymandered legislature uh, that. Uh, will, you know, is refusing to change this law, which as meant, we have a host on this show, Kristen Lyon, who's an OBGYN. And she can't even practice in Wisconsin. Wow. She's got to go to Minnesota to practice. So um, we and we are just uh, we're coming up to press release. You had one yes. of your one of your uh, business partners. Uh, we contacted so the National uh, Network of Abortion Funds is the people that I've been working with at, at the at the uh, the national level and they're they allow me to make donations on wherever the can is sold so uh we've reached out to them and they're excited about this wine and they're going to be part of this press release coming up um but we also when i was selling choice wine in washington dc last week we met with NARAL, which is uh, the pro, it's called pro-choice america and they are the uh kind of the political the, the biggest political organization um that you know that fights for uh, reproductive rights around the country uh, and so, you know, I was, you know, so we will be giving to both organizations uh, a percentage of, of every single bottle that is sold. We will be giving to those organizations and, and even some local. Aren't we doing yes, some, some are, lunch uh, in, in Sonoma pretty soon? We are, we are donating to a local organization in Healdsburg this Sunday. If you're in wine country or you're headed this way, head to Healdsburg and, and jump, come and support us. It's a big rally. We'll be uh, the wine sponsor for the event and, and pouring choice wines out there. Okay, so as much as, as as much as I want to talk about choice wine, I think we need to probably move on to the next one. But let me leave this uh, choice by just reminding you that if you type in up north, 
into the uh, at link the checkout. at the checkout. So if you go to like, you go to, you know, the link in your, in the Facebook right now, it's called choice.equalityminds.com, something right. like that, right? Uh, then you can click and you can buy a bottle. And if you type in up north in the checkout, you get 20, 20% off. All right, so we're gonna leave choice wine. Mm -hmm. Matt, pour us, pour us a Chardonnay, an oaked or unoaked or middling oaked Chardonnay. Yeah, a blend. So some, a portion of it was fermented in a stainless steel tank and some okay. was fermented in barrel. So before we taste it, Matt, mm -hmm. what's the story behind this wine? So this is a fun story. And, and as Melissa mentioned, this is the second wine that we did with you. The 19th so. Amendment, again, around women's equality. This wine is called Get Your Own Damn Coffee Chardonnay, and it's a super fun label. I was inspired by my Aunt Marilyn, Dr. Marilyn Schultz, and Dr. Marilyn Schultz worked for NBC in the 1970s. And back then, as a female, you could probably become a copywriter. That was your ceiling. And true story, the boys told her to bring coffee into the conference room one too many times. My aunt is feisty, as the <laughs> kids would say, so she, she sued. The first class action lawsuit for equal pay in the workplace is my aunt Marilyn Schultz versus NBC, a case, a landmark case that was settled six years later. More than 300 women received back pay as a result of that, that lawsuit. And we wanted to salute my aunt when I came to you with this label and it's kind of a funky label and told you what the cause was behind it. You, you didn't bat an eye. You said, yeah. Matt, I'll do Chardonnay <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah, of course. It's such a beautiful Chardonnay. And I think Melissa, you don't brag enough, but for me as a, a palate, a wine palate, when you have that little blend, a little bit of that stainless steel with the new French oak and Chardonnay, mm -hmm. it brings some acidity to the table. And mm -hmm. for me, that's a game changer with mm -hmm. Chardonnay. When you have acid in Chardonnay, you can now pair it with food. And it's just a much brighter reflection of the fruit itself. We donate to an organization that actually manages a scholarship in my aunt's name at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. So we're proud to support uh, that scholarship awarded to females every year, once a year, with every bottle sold. So without further ado, cheers. Let's do it. All right. Cheers. Get your own coffee, boys. Get your own deaf coffee, boys. <laughs> what, didn't, is there some coffee over there you can help me? Oh, oh, so, oh no. Oh, oh. My. I'll be happy to pour you another glass of wine. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Mm. Just, we need some Wisconsin cheese. I know. That what, would what be the perfect thinking? accompaniment. Yeah. What are yes. we thinking? Um, I like, I know nothing, but it's less uh, acidic mm -hmm. than the Sauvignon Blanc. It's more round. And I guess I've heard the term buttery. Uh, and I like that term because it just it's just a little bigger for me, I guess. That's what I'm right. Thinking. So that's, uh, have you heard of malolactic fermentation? Oh, so the primary fermentation for wine is a yeast fermentation. Yes. So most red wines and and Chardonnay can go through malolactic fermentation. So that's a bacteria that will convert the malic acid to lac lactic acid, which is a softer mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. So it does soften um, that acidity on your palate. Do you do that on purpose? Yes. To give the yes the, the creamier texture. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't, it doesn't, she knows always, a thing or two. Huh? It doesn't always work, is the challenging part, but you may experience that in beer sometimes. Things don't always go the way you plan. I mean, the malolactic bacteria is very sensitive to temperature. Uh, we've had a lot of cold temperatures here right. lately. Uh, so, uh, this year's Chardonnay, the 2022, uh, we're struggling to get it to go through that uh, oh, wow. malolactic fermentation. And I, it might just be something vintage related too, because P, it's sensitive to pH. Um, so as a winemaker, you have to constantly be on your toes exactly. and ready to call an audible, to right? To, yes. As a packer, yeah. green yeah. packer. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So what is the period of time? Once you get the grape, uh, you know, into juice, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I guess you're, you're evaluating the grape as well. Do you do anything to the grape, even when it's on the vine to like, help it along if it's not doing what you want? Um, so I rely on the grape growers to kind of do that. Mm. Um, I will go out and check on the vineyards and kind of see how the grapes are growing, but they're kind of the experts on that. But yeah. if I see something that's concerning, um, you know, bring it to their attention. But like I said, they're, that's their thing. They're good at doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but yeah, starting probably early August, we'll go out and start checking uh, the sugars and the acid levels, uh, just kind of checking the mm -hmm. flavors. Mm -hmm. The term uh, bricks, I hear a lot. What Can you tell us what bricks? Yeah, so that's how you measure the sugar um, okay. in the grapes. So, and, and sugar will convert to alcohol level. So that's kind of what you're looking at when you're looking at the bricks level. Mm -hmm. um, if you get it too high, as Zinfandel can tend to do, uh, you'll end up with high alcohol. I mean, if the alcohol gets too high, then it'll kill the yeast uh, before it's fermented all the sugar. So, so then, when, when I have a Zinfandel that's super hot, like very right. alcoholy, that, right. that's something that's so the the sugar the bricks level right. was higher when those grapes were picked i mean okay. and zinfandel is challenging because the outside of the cluster can be raisins the inside can still be unripe okay well wow yeah zinfandel is tricky so you're measuring the the sugar and when you take a little you go out to the field and if the sugar is right you tell people to pluck it right you are the heart right. so, the so I'll, I'll call i'll call up the grape grower and say yeah i think this is ready when do you think you can pick it for me yeah yeah uh, so there's a lot of other winemakers that mm -hmm. may be getting fruit from the same vineyard you know different blocks ripen at different times uh so it's, it's a lot of coordinating during harvest time and then the different grape growers you know have different labor pools of workers to pick the grapes and that's a whole nother issue uh, so like Bob Hopkins shares workers with his neighbor. And right. so I can, you know, maybe pick this night, but not the next night. Um, it, it's, it's a challenge. And you pick at night. Of, they pick at night. Yes. yes. So the grapes come in cool in the morning is the plan. So the next question is once you pick the grapes, uh, you know, for this Chardonnay, for example, how long does it take to shepherd this thing through, uh, you know, until it's ready to drink? and ready to bottle it. I mean, may, might not be ready to drink it, you know, what's the, what's the, what's it's the timeline? Yeah. 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 Um, so this, you know, the grapes will go into the press immediately, hopefully immediately when we get it to the winery, the press cycle is about two and a half hours long. Uh, so we'll press those grapes, press that juice into a tank, let it settle, uh, rack it off the solids a couple of days later and add the yeast to the tank and if we're going to barrel that will happen as well and all those barrels need to be steamed right. uh, so there's a lot of work that goes into getting those barrels ready before we're going to put the chardonnay in them once in the barrels the chardonnay will ferment pretty fast because like i talked about we don't have temperature control mm -hmm. so we could finish fermenting in barrel in about seven to ten days but then we talked about that malolactic fermentation um, that could take months to finish, depending on the temperature. Now, can you stir Chardonnay when it, after it goes through a mallet? Is that... Yeah, so that's kind of helps to contribute to that creamy mouthfeel. We right. do stir the Chardonnay on lees or mm -hmm. stir lees in, um, in the barrel. Yeah, we have a special tool to stir in the barrels. So, so is your head spinning, Kurt? So yeah. Matt, <laughs> um, I think there's a little secret that we have for the audience. Uh oh. Is it, <laughs> does, hasn't Melissa made another wine for us i don't know that it's complete yet but we, we're I working did, on it i we're did have a little it. sample in a bottle that i had recently <laughs> it is a rosé of pinot noir and here in the russian river valley pinot noir is king and i'm sorry is queen, queen. is queen here in the russian <laughs> river valley and melissa has a beautiful rosé i tasted it this past weekend with kirk Oh, nice. I know that we're going to be bottling it in March, and that'll be the second choice label. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, I thought it was going to be uh, Rose, Rose, Rose the Renault. Yeah, we're going with choice. choice. Yes. Nice. I like so, that. That's a nice choice. I so like uh, <laughs> you can't see this in the crowd, but that's what the label Ooh, looks like. The choice wow. label, it's, wow. it's going to be more of a pink liquid. You can't see this, guys. But uh, mm. it's going to be more of a pink liquid because it's a, it's a rosé. And so it's going to have a little brown cap and it's just the color. It's just, it's the same brand, but it, we're going to have two different. We're going to have a, a, a Sauvignon Blanc, a white, and then a rosé nice. coming into summertime. Um, you know, it's, I'm really excited about both of these wines. It'll and, be a hard choice to choose. <laughs> you'll have to buy one of each. <laughs> true, true. I think so. I think you'll have to buy it. So let me just remind you, uh, up north, type that in the promo code when you go to buy choice uh, with, on the link provided. Melissa, it's been such a pleasure, pleasure to meet talking you. with you. It's a pleasure meeting you and thank you for caring. Uh, obviously you care and, you, and, and you've given your time away from 
you know, your main gig to, to make something that not only tastes wonderful, but allows us to do our, to do what we can to help women get their reproductive rights back. Thank you. So that went fast. Was fun. It did. It went yes. really fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a break real quick to reset stuff. Uh, Melissa's going to go because we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to kidnap her for too long. And then I'm going to talk to Matt about how he uh, created Equality Vines. Basically, we did the same thing with two different companies. I do beer and he's doing wine and, and we br we're brought together and we'll tell that story right after this break. All right, everybody. We are back. We are back. Uh, and uh, and and Matt saying goodbye to Melissa. We played the we played the Pixies right there because I've been I've been having to work with Matt in this. By the way, have you seen the backdrop of where we are? This is the Equality Vines tasting room, which was uh, created. Uh, by you know Matt and uh, with Jim Obergefell and we, who we actually talked to last week. Um, here, we got some more room there, Matt. Come Fantastic. on. Yeah. We talked to last week uh, while I was at the Capitol, and we talked about his story of how he was part of Obergefell v. Hodges, which was the Supreme Court case that gave us marriage equality. And so he is the partner with Matt over here, and Matt really likes the Pixies. I mean, we, <laughs> he likes, he's, he, I'm more of a classical music guy and he's a rocker. He's a big rocker. And so I mean, I figured if I'm going to talk to Matt about um, all Matt's stuff and equality minds, we've got to play the Pixies. And that's why I started with the Pixies. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I was surprised to hear my song, but I was like, yes. <laughs> all right. So, um, I think we want to start, I mean, we've got love wins here uh, mm -hmm. behind and it's such a wonderful little Instagrammable backdrop. It's great for our, our podcast. Talk to us about, you know, how, what was your idea? What was the brainchild behind? I'm going to pour us some choice because I want to drink some more. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> but tell us about how this all started. Uh, you know, so my, my aunt Marilyn, the aforementioned Dr. Marilyn Schultz uh, was my inspiration. And when she had passed away, I was, I was challenged. I decided to make a wine for her and, and I was producing wines in South Africa at the time and was challenged to, to think more grandiose than just a tribute wine for my aunt. And my aunt was definitely an activist. And so this is right around the time. This is probably early 2014. And I came up with the concept. I said, we're going to donate to LGBTQ organizations, women's equality organizations and create really beautiful wines. Um, and that was kind of, that was it. And that was my thought process. And then, uh, being a, uh, uneducated straight male, I Googled gay marriage and Jim's story, Jim Obergefell's story, uh, came up and I read about Jim's story and found myself, uh, crying and hearing about his husband who had passed and was just inspired by Jim's story. So I, I did what people do. I got on Facebook and, and found someone that knew him that I knew, and I got an introduction. And literally, I was uh, sitting poolside in San, San Diego talking to Jim on the phone. He said, Matt, I love this idea. Can you meet me in New York tomorrow? When I looked around, I said, uh, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> jumped on a plane, headed to New York, and, and met Jim. And that's where we so started. he told us the same story mm -hmm. last week. Uh, he, he, he told us what happened during dinner. And apparently, <laughs> apparently it, uh, four, two, one to four bottles of wine were consumed between the two of I you. That... No comment on that. I, I don't know the number of <laughs> bottles. There's some bottles consumed. Some. Some. It could be one. It could be multiple other than that. So, so you got, so you met, you really, you really tuned in uh, with, with Jim. Right. Uh, and, and he loved the idea. And then how did this 
how did this tap room come? I mean, you had the idea. Who, you you made probably this wine first, I'm guessing. Oh, or you sure. already so made can it. Can I grab a bottle? Is it? Can I walk sure. out? Sure. Yeah. Walk out. All right. Hold on. Now I got to do. Now I got to do my little circus dance for everybody. Um, that's okay though. He's he's walking away. So uh, he's gonna go check out the first bottle or, or whatever. But if you if you you know if if I turn this computer around, this is basically like an all windowed tap room that looks over in the middle of Guerneville, uh, which is, uh, you know, on the Russian river. on the Russian river and, uh, and this tap rooms, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's kind of a, it pays, pays homage to, uh, to a lot, you know, equality and in, in gay marriage and gay rights. And it's, it's really wonderful that, that this place, you know, with, with all of the LGTB P B. Can we help you? With I that? always do LGBTQ plus. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always screw that up. Uh, it's it pays homage to this in the middle of a city, uh, and that's pretty special. Uh, that 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 there's not a lot of blowback here, and it, it's testament to the fact we're in Northern California and not necessarily in Northern Wisconsin. We're we're in the right place to have a, uh, a progressive wine label. That's for sure. Um, this Love Wins is our kind of our flagship wine. We produce. Uh, versions of this we're doing a blanc de blanc right now yeah. uh, it's beautiful russian river fruit and i don't know if we talk about every bottle that we produce and this is why you and i work yeah. together right every bottle we produce every label supports a different organization and so when we were introduced and, and the choice opportunity came up and, and seeing what you were doing i'm like yeah. You know, we were separated at birth, I, I, I firmly believe. <laughs> we, we definitely, I mean, so Matt's originally from Chicago. He lives in San Diego now, but we definitely have a similar Midwest, like, work ethic sensibility. It's easy to work side by side with this guy because he's, he kind of operates the same as I do. So I do think we might have been separated at birth. <laughs> I think you're better at basketball. I might be better at singing, but other than that, like, we're good. The, the, the way we met was... Uh, this guy named Tom, I was doing a beer tasting uh, in Evanston, Illinois. And, you know, I was giving my shtick and everybody's drinking, getting a little inebriated. And then this guy, Tom said, you know, there's a winery that's doing the exact same thing you're doing uh, with, you know, with, with your, with your progressive beer. And he's like, can I put you in touch with them? And I was like, please, because I had actually talked Thank God they never said yes, because their, <laughs> your wine is so much better. But I had reached out to so many Wisconsin wineries, Michigan wineries to 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 say, guys, I got this label and I need wine in it. I can't have hard seltzer in it. And every last one of these wineries turned me down because they said it's too political. Mm -hmm. We don't want to we don't want to offend our audience. And um, and and so they weren't willing to work with me. And thank God they did that because because out of all that, you know, re like rejection, the timing was right. I mm -hmm. met you. And as soon as I said, let's do this, you're like, let's yeah, do I was it. ready. Yeah, the timing was good too. We were preparing to bottle and uh, reached out to Melissa because the wines are political. So our winemaker has to have buy-in, right? We don't hide who our winemaker is. Yeah. And so you have to have a lot of these moving parts. The, the branding has to fit the wine varietal, has to fit the winemaker. And for all of that to come together like it did very quickly for us was was quite impressive. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't tell you how excited I am to to actually make a difference in, in you know saving reproductive rights and it's just a great cause. So I, I think this is a fortuitous it's, that we met. So so the politically, at least in Wisconsin, because I, I I don't you know I don't I don't really think about I do think about U.S. politics a lot, but I'm like every day I'm thinking about Wisconsin politics like. It is the thing that helped elect a Democratic governor in Wisconsin because there's so many women, even Republican women, that can't believe that their you know rights to have body autonomy have been taken away. So, so you know the fact that you know obviously if we can donate a little bit of money to for every body that's every bottle that's sold, um, and also you know we're putting a little go oh, get the uh, get the thing. Yeah, I'll grab it. I'm <laughs> So what we're also doing is it's not only just the donation, but for me, it's billboards. If anybody that follows me, uh, you know, they, you know, I like to buy billboards all over Wisconsin to, you know, to, sh to tell people who to vote for uh, or tell people that, you know, Ron Johnson is a traitor because he is. So let me go close this little thing, this little, uh, 
this little this is a collar for the wine bottle and it's a Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar do you see the uh you see the little the doilies there so if you actually put a, your your phone to this QR code over here uh, it, it plays a little video um that sh that from Ruth Bader Ginsburg while she was still alive she was being interviewed and and, and, she, and it plays a video and, and the video is like for 45 seconds is like she just says it's just dumb to if you're gonna ban abortion all that does is make uh poor women suffer because they don't have the money to go to the state that will allow abortion so people with means can easily just hop on a flight or hop in a car and go to like the twin cities go to chicago i guarantee you illinois is never going to let the federal government ban abortion you know and, and 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 california will never let the federal government ban abortion without a fight so that's never going to happen and and so it really only hurts poor people and that's and that's so we say that right right mm -hmm. on the uh, on this label right here we put that and so to me it's a billboard it's not only selling wine you know and donating to the reproductive rights groups it's it's reminding people that the majority of america thinks that overturning roe v wade was was dumb yeah it was it was a bad decision um, yeah i think we can all agree there, there have been good decisions the obergefell decision and then we have bad ones yeah absolutely so so this is amazing i mean let me just talk about this so love wins we got love wins here and we got love wins here. So this is probably, you lead with this, right? When you, when you uh, this talk the, about your winery. This is the first label that we ever produced. And it was, you know, in, in honor of Jim, we have the Supreme Court uh, pillars steeped in the rainbow. And we wanted to celebrate that, that marriage equality was now the law of the land. And it's uh, been a wine that we produce in either a Blanc Noir, a Rosé, or in this case, a Blanc de Blanc. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is that, you know, Jim and I, we hit it off really well because we're both kind of wine geeks. <laughs> and one did of the, you know he liked wine when you reached out to him? I did not. Well, until our phone conversation, and then I at dinner I found out he really liked wine yeah. to the tune of about four bottles. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that was important to to the both of us was that we wanted to produce really spectacular wines, and oh by the way, we do good things. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want to be gimmicky. We didn't want to put a rainbow flag on a bottle of cheap wine. We really wanted to create beautiful wine, beautiful labels, and then raise awareness to what we're trying to influence. Yeah. So that's a good thing that you're mentioning because I've been accused of being a gimmick as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I've only, and I, I've, I've, I've never hidden from this. I contract brew, uh, and, and some of the best breweries in Wisconsin have made my beer. Um, but, it's always been this little bit of a, you know, it's like, are you really like Biden beer? You know, are you really, is it just a gimmick? Is it really good? And so I've had to fight that. Yeah. And, and so I, I can I, understand I just, that you've yes. had to fight that a little bit. Yeah. People come in and their, their eyebrows are raised. We get wine snobs that come in and usually by the second glass, they're fully on board. And <laughs> I hear, Boy, I didn't expect this. Wow. I didn't expect this. And I'm sure you probably hear the same when you do a yeah. beer tasting, right? People never expected, AOC IPA to be as good as as is what they say, and some people say it's their favorite IPA. Uh, and it's, it's the, the reason is, is I tell the guys making my beer, I'm like, guys, we have to get over the cynicism of people thinking that's a gimmick. So we really have to make the best version of an IPA or a Kolsch or a or a, or a lager that we can make. Um, but the uh, you know I like the I I I, I you know I gel with you know, changing, changing hearts and my, Oh, I gel with the fact that there's enough artists in the winemaking world mm -hmm. and enough artists in the beer making world that, that it's okay to add a cause. Yes. You know, and, and I think, especially with a luxury brand, I think that for years, it, it can a luxury brand actually be a cause based product as well. Um, and we're, you and I are proving the model. Right. I yeah. mean, these are these are high end wines, high end beers. So I haven't met another brewery that's been doing this, and I haven't. I mean, you're the first winery, and I've been rejected by so many uh, that that I potentially think you might be the only one doing this. Do you think you are, or are there I, others? I, in terms of this, put uh, our cause and what we do around equality. Yes, we're we're the only wine company based on equality, and you raise a good point. When we go out 
our process is this. We, we start with where we're going to have impact. What is the cause? From there, we create the label. And then from there, we decide, well, what kind of wine varietal fits this sort of branding, marketing, and cause? Especially, for instance, we do a wine called Stonewall. And I don't have to tell everybody the gay history, but Stonewall just reflects that passion and that birthplace of the LGBTQ movement. Stonewall Rosé doesn't capture that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get to something big and powerful and red. Yeah. And then from there, we determine who are the best winemakers at this particular varietal. And then we go and we humbly ask them. Yeah. So the same thing I did, I was like, okay, if I'm doing Kamala Harris, you know, like she's a strong black woman. Right. Like some people called me racist, but I was like, it's got to be a stout. You know, yeah. it just, it would, it'd be dumb if it weren't a stout, right. you know, and it's not because she's stout, you know, and some, I got that too from people, oh, you know, goodness. that was dumb, but I was like, it has to be a black beer. Yeah, Kamala she's a black Pilsner woman, doesn't make Count, sense Kamala Pilsner, would, and it had to be strong. Yes. And it was, it's a 9.8% alcohol Ooh. by volume. And it's the strongest. I said, make, I make this stout the strongest you can make in a can without barrel aging it for like 30 you know 10, 10 years and i think you're honoring a strong powerful woman i totally. think that's that's beautiful yeah. totally so i uh, there's thought behind it you know and so i like the fact that so he said stonewall and, and he thinks that everybody knows what this means but my audience doesn't okay you know stonewall is the bar in new york city where these uh, gay uh you know they the, the policemen came in and, and they started to start hitting it was a gay bar and the policemen came in and they started beating people up and it was kind of this this it was like the last straw in new york and it it's started. actually very can i tell the yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. so the stonewall inn was a gay bar or is a gay bar to this day and back in the day gays were, were illegal in new york but they allowed stonewall to exist and then every now and then the police would come in very heavy-handed god forbid that gays have a dance party <laughs> in june of 1969 judy garland passed away and the gays are in full mourning. They love Judy Garland. Yeah. And the police come in to break up the party at Stonewall and they resisted. Three days of resistance or riots, depending on your perspective, yeah. led to the modern LGBTQ movement and June Pride. I mean, this is all wow. around the same thing. So we wanted to honor that fierceness. Um, and as they talk to, yeah, well, that fierceness is a big, strong red yeah. Cabernet, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we are, uh, we are, We've come to, you know, like, I probably want to ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to probably go. But, you know, I, I love, you know, like, do you wake up in the morning and feel good about your job? Yes. <laughs> I do, too. Yes. Because, because I like to drink and you like to drink. <laughs> and we both found that out over the last couple of days. But I also like to be able to make fun things actually have more meaning. Uh, right. and, and wine and, you know, we've drank a lot of great wine and, and we've met, I've met some of the winemakers or the other winemakers that are, are all these uh, make yes. some of his other wines and, and the, these artists, you know, they're, they're progressive, but, but because they're winemakers, they, they haven't even been able to express their progressiveness right. potentially as much as they want to. And they don't have they that podium and they don't have that platform to speak. And we, yeah. we give that to them. Yeah. Yeah. And the art, their artists, and so many artists, and I, you know, I'm a singer, and so many artists are, uh, are, truth is what they focus on. You can't BS your way through making a good wine. No. You have to be good at your, your thing, and 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 so you can kind of see through BS when you, if you're an artist, winemakers, classical singers, etc. And so they're progressive because they see the BS and they they can kind of like see through a lot a lot of this stuff, and uh, so it makes me feel good because. Uh, a lot of people even making my beer or the brewers making my beer said are all behind what I'm doing, but they can't necessarily be as political as, as my brand can be. Is that what you're thinking too? Yeah. And I, I don't know that, I think beer might be a different animal, right? And, yeah. um, but with wine, I, I don't think that our, I think most of our winemakers, actually all of our winemakers are ideologically aligned and they're, they're proud of that ideological stance like yeah. you saw melissa she couldn't be more proud yeah. that you're my choice. brewers don't necessarily want to get you right. know, on, a, on a table with me right now and, and talk about how progressive they are <laughs> yeah and your winemakers do and that, i get that but yeah. it's also because i'm in wisconsin and you're True. in california you like it up here don't you i do okay. but i'm a wisconsinite all right I, it was 30 degrees here and i went on a jog this morning yes. and i felt completely at home and, and your winemaker or somebody else came in here and she said i've never i've never been this cold in my life <laughs> 
I was freezing. I had 18 layers when I went out today, yes. <laughs> it's from San Diego. You're from Chicago, but your blood is thin, my friend. Yes, it has. Okay, so that's anything you want to say before, before Mention we... up north, 20% off, promo yep. code at checkout. Okay, yeah, so before we leave, this is, this is more of a sales thing than, the than our normal political podcast, but we want you to buy this stuff because it's freaking good. Uh, so it's uh, go to the website that's on the Facebook page. It's like choice.equalityvines.com. Uh, you're going to see this bottle. Go buy it, and at the checkout, you can pr press, just, just type in up north, and you'll get 20% off. Actually, on every wine we sell. On every sign, on every wine you sell, get. The, by the way, I had this one when I first got here, uh, and I loved it. And he actually let me like take a home a bottle to my hotel room, and and I felt worse in the morning because of it because I drank the whole darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good one too, this yeah. Stonewall. So thank you everybody for joining us. Thanks Matt for coming and talking about your whole your business and talking about your your vision. Uh, Next week, we'll, we'll be back in Wisconsin and we'll be back talking about politics. We're going to talk about how Medicaid expansion could be litigated in Wisconsin. The lack of Medicaid expansion, we're one of five states that don't have it, uh, could be relitigated in Wisconsin if we elect a progressive Supreme Court judge, and that's Janet Protasiewicz. So join us next week. Uh, and Vote thank for you. Janet. <laughs> and thanks for joining us uh, up north at the cab. See you next week. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Oh, yeah.